it's bunny and welcome to my youtube channel hopefully this video is on youtube and not patreon but if not then it probably is on my patreon uh, for today i will be reacting to professional wrestling is stupid and beautiful and i love it and this is by super ipad world a lot of you have recommended this channel and told me to react to this channel because it's very educational and i can like go through the analysis of wwe and learn more about everything because as you know i'm a biggest noob and i'm trying my best to learn about it and i'm really excited to see and learn more however unfortunately from a lot of the reactions that i have uploaded on my uh, youtube a lot of them have been blocked this is literally the last couple of videos that i uploaded and all of them got flagged all of them so you will see all of these videos on my patreon patreon.com slash support bunny i will leave a link in the description down below all right guys that is it let's hope this works and we don't get flagged <laughs> um yeah let's go okay i'm okay. guessing right about now a lot of you are wondering why the hell a video about wrestling is showing up in your subscription feed and i oh, get it I wrestling know. is totally not for everybody Woo. but it's also april 1st which means your timeline is probably filled with april fool's day videos okay and rather than add another to the pile i thought i'd take this opportunity and do something a little different okay. and talk about a form of entertainment i've loved for basically my entire life and if you hate professional wrestling, if you're wondering why I would debase myself covering such a ridiculous subject clearly aimed at children, well, oh, first so off, I have some bad news for you about the rest of this channel, and why? second, you are actually the person I'm making this video for. Me? My goal here isn't to turn you into a wrestling fan, just Dude, to try- you don't have to even try. I can literally call myself a wrestling fan. At least like an entertainment wrestling, not the actual wrestling sport, you know? Yeah, I can watch those matches, don't get me wrong, but mm, nah, WWE is where my heart is. And help you understand why so many people are. Yeah, look and understanding the world look. around us is a good thing, right? Even the parts of it that seem really dumb yeah. and insane, right? Oh my god! Right. Ouch. Okay, elephant in the room, wrestling is fake. And no, not even in the way oh. Game of Thrones... Oh no shit Sherlock, no shit Sherlock and every other detective, really? <laughs> I didn't know that, I thought everything I saw there is real. It's fake, professional wrestling is a pretend sport masquerading as a real one. These two women are not actually fighting, these two men do not actually hate each other, and this is not an actual evil voodoo priest named Papa Shango, <laughs> it's Charles Wright who's also played the role of a salty martial artist and a jovial pimp. Oh my God. And he, alongside <laughs> okay. an entire industry of his fellow wrestlers, all work together as a highly choreographed physical theater, the goal of which is to convince the audience that yep. what they are seeing is an actual competitive event. This is the sticking point with a lot of people in wrestling. True. The idea that it's fake and not a legitimate sport, what thus the devaluing it as a piece of entertainment. Oh, but to wait, me, wait, 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 wait. Was that a sex toy? <laughs> what was that? And that's like, what? Mm. Okay, all right. To each their own, to each their own. Wrestling isn't devalued by the fact that it's fake, rather it's fascinating because of it. True. And through this, True. in a very strange way that I'm going to explain by the end of this video, can also be more real than virtually anything else on television. The revelation that wrestling is fake Damn. is not a new one, not by a long shot. It was in 1938. But come on, guys, like movies are fake. Uh, series are fake, anime is fake, but you get into the story. You don't care that it's fake. You live through the fakeness. You live through those stories. This is just another retelling, another form of retelling a story. That North American newspapers stopped reporting the results of pro wrestling. Ah, uh, the New York Times? Nazi smashed loot and burned Jewish shops and temples and till gobbles calls out. Wait, wait, excuse me? Why are you showing this? Because at that point, journalists had become wise to the idea that the results of these matches were predetermined. Up yeah. until this point, wrestling yeah. had mainly been a sideshow at carnivals, but that changed when Dude. wrestling bookers learned two things. The first was that the sport was a lot more profitable for them if they could decide the outcome. 
But seconds, True. it was also a lot more entertaining for the audience. True. As rather than the matches being just a pure contest of strength and skill, where the winner could have all the potential charisma and charm of a bag yep. of wet chalk, they could instead engage the crowd with heroes and villains and create rivalries and storylines around them, story which would keep the, the audience important. coming back exactly. week after week. Exactly. This would also skyrocket wrestling's popularity in the early days of television, turning what had started as a carny show into a national obsession, which also meant that now maintaining the illusion that wrestling was real was more critical than ever. Ooh. And this is what led to the implementation of kayfabe. Kayfabe, kayfabe. was originally a code word wrestlers used kayfabe. to signal to each other that there were fans or outsiders nearby, and so the illusion of wrestling would need to be maintained. But in a much broader sense, it's a term used to refer to the portrayal of stage events as real, and specifically of wrestling as a legitimate contest and wrestling personas as actual people and real competitive athletes, meaning that wrestlers were expected to play their fictional wrestling personas whenever they were out in public. And so heroic wrestlers known as faces were expected to be friendly and kind to their fans while villainous wrestlers known as heels were instructed to be unpleasant and antagonistic. And above all else, faces and heels were never ever to be seen together in public, as doing so would the give way life. that the rivalry between the two was fabricated, thus exposing the secret That's reality. That's sad. Of the Imagine business. like the uh, he's your colleague, you work with him, but because your story storyline story is like that you go against each other and you hate each other, you cannot even meet in public. Everything you have to do is in secrecy secrecy and that's very hard to maintain some people will not even bother it's like i don't have to be a friend with that person even though probably in another in another universe in another life they will be the best friends english is not good today yeah english is bad the illusion of kayfabe was fiercely maintained even well into the 90s. It was what allowed fans to let themselves believe that wrestling was real, despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. As a wrestling fan, people were always eager to tell you that it was fake, but it was always easy to dismiss because it always came Whoa, from people that disliked huge. wrestling. But then, one fateful night on May 19th, 1996, 1996, an incident would occur that would destroy the illusion of wrestling. Oh my god. And it was an incident known what? as the curtain call. The curtain call. The curtain call took place right in the center of Madison Square Garden, and it involved a group of four wrestlers who shared an ah, off-camera okay. friendship and were known backstage as the Click. Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, Shawn Michaels, and Paul I know Quebec. This. this was the last night Hall and Nash would be Blake. performing under the banner of WWF, and the following day would be jumping ship to rival company WCW. Michaels and Nash were bitter rivals in WWF's storyline at this point, and in the final match of the night, Michaels was set to defeat Nash in a steel cage match. But what wasn't part of the script was what came after the match's conclusion when the cameras stopped rolling. When Michael straddled his unconscious opponent and revived him with a Snow White-esque kiss. Fans looked kiss on, that? bewildered and stunned. And then, to add to the confusion, Hall and Levesque both came to the ring and the four friends celebrated an emotional farewell. The problem, though, was that this was not part of the WWF canon storyline. Not only did these four wrestlers not have an on-camera friendship, they were meant to actively despise one another, Whoa. with Hall and Michaels both being beloved faces and Nash and Levac loathed heels. But if that was true, then why were they all in the ring hugging and celebrating? And somebody recorded Were these that? guys actually friends? Oh yeah, my god. The incident never aired on national television, but it didn't matter. The advancement of home camcorder technology alongside the rise of the internet meant that the footage was captured by fans and free to rampage across the World Wide Web. Destroyed. And the result was that the illusion of kayfabe that professional wrestling had shrouded itself in for so many years was left tattered and broken, True. with wrestling audiences around the world faced with the now undeniable fact that wrestling was fake, and underneath the facade lay a separate reality, a reality yeah. that lay just below the surface, tantalizingly out of sight.
This is what would lead to the modern era of pro wrestling. To wrestling fans now, the secret that wrestling is scripted is not a secret. Yeah. Instead, what we have now is a form of entertainment that exists in two separate realities. The fictional world of kayfabe and the actual real life business and politics behind yeah. it. Which leaves us with the question, if wrestling is fake and that knowledge is widely known, then what then is the appeal of it? If someone a wants to watch lot. a genuine content- Oh my god! Like, if you ask me what got me into WWE this year, uh, and, and why? Why am I here right now? It would be like actually really hard. I might make a whole YouTube video about it because I still, I still need more time to process it. Your brain needs more time to process things and like uh, rethink it. But there is this something. It, it, it hooks you. The storytelling, if it is done very, very well, and if these personas or these people know how to act it believably, you literally forget the fact that it is a fake story because you get so involved into it. You get so involved into the whole timeline, into the outcome. And people love to watch sport as entertainment nonetheless. Like when you watch football or any other sports on TV, you are rooting for someone to win or for someone to lose. And there is that outcome in WWE as well, you know? So there is always this thing that is hanging by a thread at the end and you just want to know what's going to happen and you never know. And the good thing about WWE, it's not like just a normal match with a normal ending no this time you have plot twist upon plot twist so you never know it's not only like who's gonna win and who's gonna lose but who's gonna screw who as well <laughs> you know what i mean so yeah it's just that and you fall in love with these lovable characters as well and you root for them and sometimes you have some people who you really hate and you just want them to get destroyed and they deliver they definitely know and they definitely deliver but that's my opinion let's see what he thinks of skill and strength, then why not just go watch UFC? And the answer to that lies in the fundamental difference between the two, that this is a competition and this is a story. Yep. Wrestling, like so many other forms exactly. of fiction, is about telling stories. Yep. I want you to look at these clips and forget for a moment that you're watching wrestling. Just try and imagine your own body performing these maneuvers. Think about the years it's, it's, of training painful, it would take to be brother. able to yeah. move like this and about the timing and trust you need to have in another person exactly. to execute these sequences. Yep. And ask yourself, what is all that effort for? What is actually being achieved here? And the answer is that they're building a narrative through the suspension of disbelief. The suspension mm -hmm. of disbelief is the simultaneous belief in two inconsistent things. Anyone who watches The Matrix believes both that we are watching a fight between Neo and Morpheus, but is aware that we're actually watching Keanu Reeves and Lawrence Fishburne perform a choreographed sequence of actions being shot on a film yeah, set. Yeah. And it's the filmmaker's job that. to make it as easy on the audience as possible to suppress that second idea, which is why solid acting, writing and editing is so important. So because important. a discrepancy in any particular one could break the audience's immersion, destroying our investment mm -hmm. in the story. But immersion is also something that's created in very different ways in different different forms of art. Mm -hmm. Take the Movie. far simpler medium of Rakugo. Rakugo is a minimalist form of Japanese theatre involving a single actor kneeling on stage, whose only props are a fan and a piece of cloth. And with what? this ultra-minimalist setup, they play out entire stories, even embodying multiple characters, using subtle gesturing That's and so posing fun. along with tonal inflection to convey different people. And so the immersion, like the suspension man. of disbelief, is created purely through the physical performance of the Look actor. A skilled Rakuga can make it feel like an actual story with a full cast of characters is playing out in front of us, despite the fact wow. we can very clearly see it's just one person kneeling on stage. That actually reminds me of audiobooks. Um, I love reading books. I love, 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 love reading books. I have a lot of books on my shelf, if you can see. But um, I started listening to books as well on my walks. Like, I like to get a 50-minute walk to one hour walk in the morning. And then I listen to a book. And if you know who to listen, like, if the person that is narrating the audio, so the narrator, if that 
person knows the job and does it very well. They know how to narrate from different personalities in the book, if there is more than one character, of course, and if it's female to male, and how to change their tonation and uh, character and how they speak. You guys, even the accent and everything, like the dialect, it's crazy. It, it is crazy how good an audio book can be and how invested you can be in it if the person, the narrator, does a great job at telling it. If you know what I mean. <laughs> Age. Wrestling works the exact same way. Just like film, just like Rakugo, what the performers are ultimately trying to do is make us believe that what we're seeing is real. And not only just in the staged violence, but also by embodying these characters and their emotions. One of the things I love about Kaneko Arai, real name to former NXT Women's Champion Asuka, is that from the moment she steps out into an arena, everything from her wardrobe to the way she walks to how she plays with the camera embodies this fascinating fictional character. A bizarre, violent person who takes distinct glee in breaking her opponents apart. And because of how good Arai is at conveying this character both through her wrestling and the subtlety of her actions, you don't see the actual performance behind it. Uh -huh. You just see Asuka, yeah, the Empress see of Tomorrow. I don't know how she This is, is something real life. that all great wrestlers do the embodiment of a fictional persona, nice. a character. And so, all a wrestling match is, is what happens when this. two of these fictional characters meet at particular points in their lives and the story that unfolds through that. Granted, that might sound a little weighty, so to show this, I'd like to use an example from a match from WrestleMania 8 in the form of Rowdy Roddy Piper versus Bret the Hitman Hart. Piper was the defending Intercontinental Champion, a fan favorite, and the far more experienced of the two, while Hart was the rising new star mm -hmm. of the company. And just watch the story that plays out between these two characters. From the outset, Piper is consistently out-wrestled by Hart, having each throw and hold countered and turned okay. back on him, to the point that it's obvious that he cannot beat Hart in a technical wrestling match, at which point Piper changes tactics, pretending okay. to show respect to Hart to lower his guard before blindsiding him with a brutal closed fist attack, and begins to decimate his younger opponents with a string of vicious illegal assaults. <laughs> until finally Hart, now bloody and battered, rallies, gaining a read on his opponent once again and countering so everything cool, Piper man. can throw at him, until Justice. finally Piper, left with no oh other God. option, knocks the referee unconscious and grabs hold of the ring bell, and is about wow. to use it to put his younger opponent away once and for all. But then there's just this beautiful little moment where Piper just stops and oh. looks at the sea of people surrounding him and is left awash in a chorus of boos, the fans disgusted by his actions. Woo! He used so to be cool. the hero in these situations. These used to be his fans. Now they're booing and in this him. moment of realization, yeah. he throws away oh the God, bell and the crowd explodes at this subtle act of redemption. <gasps> before finally Piper is outdone one last time, accepts his defeat with grace, passing both the torch and his title and to the newer generation. There nice. is so much to this match. It's basically an entire fallen hero slash villain redemption story arc oh told in God, 60 exactly. minutes without any dialogue, exactly. purely conveyed through the physical storytelling of both Thank wrestlers. You for saying that. And I that's think exactly that's kind of about. incredible. From here, Piper's career would start to fade and Brett, after years of success, would eventually find himself in a match where the roles were reversed, Ooh. where now he was the veteran the crowd had turned against as he faced off against the new rising star of the company, Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> This is what professional wrestling her. is, and while it's not always good or even socially acceptable, when it's at its best it can be exciting, too funny, too even, of. in the same way that knowing Yusuke versus Tagoro is just a bunch of cells being photographed in rapid succession doesn't take away from the emotional impact of that. Okay, everything we just talked about, that's all the kayfabe side of wrestling, the fictional performance created by the wrestlers and writing staff. But as we mentioned earlier, there is another side to wrestling, and that's the actual reality behind it. True. When you begin to look into the industry of pro wrestling for long enough, 
a strange thing starts to happen, and that is that the line between what's real and what isn't gradually begins to blur. Yep. And you begin to see moments when the fictional world of kayfabe and the actual reality of the business begin to bleed into one another. Mm -hmm. And identifying the point where one starts and the other ends becomes nearly impossible. True. And to show this, we need to go back to the curtain call. The curtain call and its shattering of kayfabe was seen by many of the wrestlers and staff within the WWF as an appalling attack on wrestling. And so, there had to be punishment. Someone had to pay the price for this transgression. It couldn't be either Scott Hall or Kevin Nash, as they had both already left the company. And it couldn't be Shawn Michaels, because he, at the time, was the current WWF champion, and already a problem in many other areas. Mm. And so the entirety of the blame fell on Paul Levesque, an upper mid-card wrestler with a lot of potential who seemed bound for greatness. And as punishment, his entire career was derailed. Oh, and he yeah, found himself yeah. at the bottom of the card once again, being forced to endure a string of humiliating losses in matches that showed him as weak and ineffective, with other wrestlers shrugging <laughs> off his attacks and quickly and easily defeating him. Oh my God. Writing like this is devastating to a wrestler's career. True. It destroys the fictional credibility a wrestling persona has with the audience and therefore severely damages their ability to draw a crowd and thus there? earn a living wage. But this was the new reality that Levac now faced. None of this and was part of the be actual. Let's like he knew that he has to suffer through this uh, narrative just as a payback, of course. But he knew there will be an end to it, and there will be maybe a redemption or something. Nobody would say, "Okay, yeah, let's go. Let's 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 put my whole career downhill and never rise up again." Like, why would you go through that? WF storyline or even mentioned on TV. From the audience's perspective, all that was happening was Levac was a wrestler who used to win a lot and then suddenly stopped. Yeah, now, like, let's take a moment happen? that came four years later. At this point, Levac had sweat and bled his way back to the top of the card exactly. and had been reborn as title contender Triple H. And in an interview that was meant to be kayfabe, that was meant to be scripted, this happened. Hey, watch your line. What, you, you want me to shoot with this interview? I'm gonna f***ing shoot with it. It's about four years ago, Madison Square Garden, I walked to the ring to say goodbye to my friends, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, Shawn Michaels. He's calling it. Who got punished for that, JR? You did. Well, you know what? That makes me sick in my stomach. Every time I look at you guys, it makes me sick to think what you did to me, holding me back. You guys Whoa. talk about being students of the game. I am the f***ing game, JR. There is nobody that eats, sleeps, or breathes this business more than me. The thing to note here is that he's referring to events that never took place in the fictional WWF storyline. He's referring to things that really happened. And so, oh, yeah. ask yourself, who is actually speaking here? Is it the yeah. fictional wrestling persona Triple H? Or is it the actual human both. being behind the persona, Paul Levesque? I Levesque, think both. The person who had to actually... He is regretting the decisions that, uh, or whatever happened to him as Triple H, you know? Like, it, 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 it's kind of, I don't know. It, 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 it's kind of both of these personas at the end, after you play the same character for years and years and years, you start, honestly, start breathing and, and, and believing that you are that character, you know? Endure the ire of WWF management for years and nearly saw his career ruined. And the answer is that it's both. It's both Triple H exactly. and Paul <laughs> Levesque. Oh my God, and the I result is that there's an honesty and an anger that's genuinely mm -hmm. captivating yeah. as the reality starts to fuel the fiction. Mm -hmm. And there are dozens of incidents like this that have taken place throughout the years yeah, of wrestling. I'm sure. The Montreal Screwjob, the forced retirement and recent return of Daniel Bryan, and possibly in which former wrestler yeah. CM Punk took to a mic and verbally oh. rendered the entire WWE, laying waste to the management, his fellow wrestlers, and even his own fans. Uh -oh. I'm barely promoted. I don't get to be in movies. I'm certainly not on any crappy show on the USA Network. But this to me is oh, what's so uniquely shit. captivating so about true, 
wrestling. Out of all forms of entertainment in no other is the line between fiction and reality so delicate and malleable, where the fourth wall is so fragile, and when it does finally give way, it can lead to some of the most intense and oddly sincere storytelling in any form of entertainment. As fake as wrestling can be, these are the moments when it becomes shockingly real. Yep. These moments Very show nice something moment. else also, and that is that at its heart, wrestling is just a story about people. Yep. No matter how theatrical a wrestling persona is, at its core, it's just a person. Mm -hmm. One as real and flawed exactly. as anyone else. And when you start to watch wrestling for long enough, it's the stories of these people that become the main draw as you watch them grow and age and change. So to conclude this video, I want to talk about one of these stories. I want to okay. talk about the saga of the Golden Lovers. Our Golden story begins Lovers. in 2008 as two young wrestlers wage war okay, on that's one not another. That far. The first is Kota Ibushi, a young, supremely talented Japanese oh wrestler God. who seems bound that's for so greatness. Cool. And the other is Kenny Omega, yeah. a Canadian wrestler who, after seeing tapes of Ibushi's matches, felt destined to face him. And so he issued an open challenge to Kota, which Ibushi accepted. And so Omega traveled to Japan and a showdown took place that was messy, brutal, and mesmerizing. Ow. Ibushi Ow. eventually took the victory, but it didn't matter. What? Over the course of the match, the two wrestlers realized something. There was a connection here. Both what? wrestlers believed that wrestling could be more than just wrestling. It could be a vehicle for comedy, a way to tell stories, okay. hell, it could even be art. And together, the two resolved to change the world of wrestling. Omega Ow. uproots his entire life and moves to Japan to be closer to Ibushi. Dude, and rather so than become cool. rivals, they form a tag team, what? initially being pitched okay. as the Golden Brothers, but Omega and Ibushi prefer the name the Golden Lovers. The Golden Lovers are on a level few other Wait, tag teams can even together? approach. There's a kinship and a synchronicity here that fuels their matches. But what's so more, cool. they seem genuinely delighted to be around each other, yeah. both in the ring and outside it and that chemistry shows in their exceptional so teamwork epic. and performances, with the Japanese Woo. audience embracing them wholeheartedly <laughs> as they capture multiple tag titles. A and Canadian by 2011, Japan. it feels like their dream is beginning to come true. The Golden Lovers are inseparable, and they are changing the face of wrestling. Wow, but slowly, a gap starts to form between oh, no. the two. While Koda only needs to rely on his God-given natural talents, Kenny often struggles, having to work hard to overcome his own weakness and to keep pace with Ibushi, yeah. and he starts to feel outpaced by his genius partner. Koda's yeah. genius doesn't go unnoticed either. He's being given more opportunities as a single wrestler, and yeah. what's more, he's winning. And with yeah. each victory, Kenny feels a little more left behind. Yeah, and so, happened. on August 18th, 2012, after three years of partnership, the two I mean, face each other. Years. And what yeah. follows is one of the most spectacular matches in history. Kota fighting for his pure love of wrestling, and Kenny desperately battling as to not be Ooh. left behind by the person he cares about the most. But Damn. it's not enough. He cannot overcome the genius of Ibushi. And afterwards, both wrestlers look devastated. Kenny for the loss, and Kota for having inflicted it upon him. Over the next two years, the gap between the two would only continue to widen. Ibushi continues to rise, even going so far as to face the legendary King of Strong Style, Shinsuke Nakamura. But meanwhile, Kenny struggles without his former partner, gaining only modest wins and racking up several major losses, including one especially crushing defeat at the hands of Prince Devitt, a member of the villainous Bullet Club, a vicious faction of American wrestlers who spit in the face of Japanese pro wrestling, overwhelming opponents with their superior numbers and brutal tactics. And the experience changes Omega. He can't help feel that now, without Ibushi by his side, he is alone, but Devitt has an entire army of allies behind him. And so a realization dawns on him. Maybe with the Bullet Club, he could finally become strong enough to stand no, as an equal with Ibushi. And so, two weeks later, he emerges as their newest member. 
and it works. He wins and he keeps winning until the day finally comes when his mentor and leader of the Bullet Club, AJ Styles, faces Coda for the IWJP Heavyweight Championship. In typical Bullet Club fashion, Kenny was expected to sabotage Ibushi, but he can't. He holds back for the entire match until its final moments, when Ibushi scales the turnbuckle and is seconds from victory, only to turn his head and see Kenny standing on the ring apron and the two lock eyes. And Kenny becomes paralyzed between his loyalty for the Bullet Club and his feelings towards his former partner, and so fails to act. But this momentary distraction is just enough time for Styles to recover, and he counters Ibushi's attack for a crushing comeback oh defeat. No. Afterwards, Omega is visibly shaken, while Ibushi lies devastated both by the loss and the betrayal of his former partner. Not long after, Ibushi disappears from the Japanese wrestling scene, while Omega only continues to grow more ruthless, vicious, and victorious and he begins to dominate New Japan, shrouding himself in the indestructible armor of the Bullet Club and even deposing Styles as its leader, taking the crown for himself. This new invincible Kenny Omega even makes it to the very final of the G1 Climax, the most elite wrestling tournament in the entire world. But his conquest has taken its toll, and he enters the match battered and exhausted, facing the immovable and dangerous Hiroki Goto, who punishes Omega again and again, constantly pushing him to the brink of defeat. And as the light of victory begins to fade away, Omega reaches deep down inside himself and what he finds is his old partner Ibushi, whose finisher, the shining star powerbomb, he uses in a final sequence of moves to overcome Goto and take the win. And so finally he's done it. He's the best in the world. But without Ibushi by his side, how much does it actually mean? Matter, yeah, it this matter. inner conflict is only made worse when a year later Omega suffers a crushing loss in the finals of the same tournament. And afterwards, backstage, comes face to face with Ibushi for the first time since his betrayal. And Ibushi reaches out to comfort Omega, but Kenny cannot accept it. Things have gone too far. It's too late. And slowly, the unbreakable armor Omega has surrounded himself in begins to crack and crumble. And sensing weakness, the other members of the Bullet Club begin to turn on him, oh. with the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes using his feelings for Ibushi as a weapon against him, culminating in a savage attack on Koda, only to have Omega furiously defend his former partner. Yes! This eventually leads to the Bullet Club turning on Kenny, destroying him with a no! vicious assault, only for Ibushi to run to the <laughs> ring and save his former partner. And then, in a moment that's been oh 10 god. years oh in the god. making, oh the two finally just stand in the ring and face one another. Ah. Ibushi, desperate Please. to reform their partnership. Please. But it's just too late. No! Too I much mean. has happened and the scars run too deep. Omega cannot accept his former partner. Until. He does, he makes him. After a story 10 years in the making, the Golden Lovers are reunited. What's so incredible to me about the saga of the Golden Lovers is that it's a story that could only really occur in wrestling. One that's about two people who felt a connection and formed something beautiful, <laughs> only to later be torn apart by the different directions life pulled them in. And then finally, years later, to realize what really Ten mattered. And what's more, identifying making. what's okay. real here and what isn't is, is nearly impossible. Omega was genuinely a young wrestler who was inspired by a videotape of Ibushi. Ibushi's talent did outshine Omega, and the two were genuinely caught between their love of competing together and their aspirations as single wrestlers. Yep. And as a result, there's a heart and a strife to this story that's so genuine and real. And I think at its best, that's what wrestling can be. Oh, he left all yes, stuff. it's that... fake, but that doesn't mean it can't be honest. Doesn't mean its stories can't be about real things that we can all relate to. This is why I'm still a fan, why yeah. so many people are, and why I think at least that professional wrestling is 
fascinating. It is. Woo! Thank you for this amazing, amazing video. It made me cry. It made me happy. It made me feel so many emotions. The editing of the video as well, how he's speaking about it, everything. It's so amazing. I look forward in the future to be able to make videos like that as well. I'm, I'm just learning still, but hopefully in the future, I'll be able to produce higher content and higher quality content for you guys. But I do need your support for that. Make sure to like this video, guys. Liking it is so, so, so important. Add it to a WWE play playlist of your favorite videos. Uh, somehow that works for the algorithm and for new people to check out your playlist and check out me and find me among your favorite uh content creators out there for wwe also comment down below what other videos you would like me to react to and if you haven't seen this video on youtube and you're on patreon welcome to my patreon thanks so much for being a part of my patreon but if you're watching this on youtube go and check it out patreon.com support bunny thank you for watching this with me and sharing this whole amazing video this kind of a documentary video where we learned a lot about wrestling and why we love it and i agreed so many times with the guy speaking and he agreed with me as well so i love it i really really love everything about it thank you for watching have a wonderful day and see you hopefully tomorrow with a brand new video unless youtube finds it <laughs> bye